So, I'm now going to move on to aspects of improving the writing style and use of English. And then hopefully I'll stop in time for us to have a few questions and answers. Um, so, before I get to this though, your next step is just to celebrate, relax. Send the manuscript to your co-authors, let them struggle with it, let them read through it, <coughs> while you get on with something and, and clean your brain from it. You know, it's been taking over your life for so many days that it's now time for you to, to try to forget about it and, and I want you consciously to try to forget about it. Because, because when it comes back to you from the co-authors and you start reading it again, you will look at it in a different light. You will look at it with fresh eyes. And you will see things that you didn't see when you were actually writing the words. So, it is important for you to, to have a break after you've finished your manuscript, put it away for a few days, and then come back and start reading it again. And that's the time, not only will you be thinking about changing some of the information content, because you realize, oh, I, that wasn't clear, or, oh, I really should have put this in. But it's also the opportunity for you to look at your use of English and to see whether you can improve the quality of the English. So, the rest of these slides for this part of the course are going to be looking at aspects of English and how you can improve the manuscript. So, uh, here we go. Put it aside, come back to it later. And this is, this is the time to, to tighten up the text, to get rid of all those unnecessary words. This is the time to think as if you're not Serbian. You know, forget the fact that we all live in Serbia and our language, well, yes, I'm Serbian. I imam Drzev Lanstvo. So I can claim to be one of you. Um, but because the Serbian language is very different in its structure from the, uh, from the English language, then the way that you think about writing information is very different from the way that I automatically do it. So, this is the time to tighten up the text, remove the unnecessary words. Scientists from here like to use unnecessary words. I'm afraid it's a fact of life. So, such phrases as, it is worth pointing out in this context that information content zero. So, brishi. <laughs> Yeah, get rid of it. So may it is significant to note the fact that, or it should be borne in mind in this connection that, and other phrases that are, that are no more than spoken ums, ers, and of I, as you're thinking what to say. So get rid of all of that. And I like the one at the bottom. I have to admit uh, I've copied this from a source, so it's not my invention. <laughs> For it is plainly demonstrable from the data presented in Table 2, there's a simpler way of saying that, which is Table 2 shows. So, I'm sure you will find opportunities for simplifying your text. Has anybody seen this? You can see it's copied from a, a source. So, writing style and improving your English, do not write unnecessary words because you may not be able to read the original handwritten text on the left. The one on the left says, it seems to the present writer that it is not inconceivable to suggest that the result of this maritime enterprise may indicate a possible discovery of a probably new continent. You know, scientists never like to be definite in their statements. There's always room for doubt, isn't there? You see, alternatively, you could say, I think I discovered America. That's perhaps the simpler way of saying that. 
Now I've got an example here which is from an appendix. I've got the appendix on my laptop so if anybody actually wants it let me know. You should have my email address and I'll be happy to send you this. This is an appendix put together for a book written by uh, Robert Day on how to write and publish a scientific paper. And this is a very useful appendix because it's it's words and expressions to, to avoid. So on the left hand side, he's got examples of what people will, will typically write. And on the right hand side, here's a much simpler way of doing it. So a considerable amount of, you replace that with much. A considerable number, you replace with many, and so on. And in my version of this, I've actually highlighted in, in red text phrases that I have found are common in uh, Slav, Slavic speaking countries. So, not just in Serbia, but also in uh, Macedonia, Bulgaria, Poland. They all have the same problems. So, here are some examples. So here we have in red on the left hand side, and I'm sure you were, some of you will have written those words. We have the aforementioned, above mentioned values for weight varied. And I've put in weight varied. The data for height showed, and I've said height showed. The findings in this section imply that, just said this implies that. Uh, the measured values, this seems to be a very common phrase that people here like to use. The measured values for time, time showed. You do measure an awful lot of things. Um, but the point is that if you think about it logically, if you hadn't measured it, then you couldn't refer to it, could you? You couldn't say what the height was if you hadn't measured it. So if it's obvious that you've measured it, you don't need to use the word. But I know, I don't know what Goggy's doing, but... <laughs> <laughs> just, just pretend that... <laughs> to pretend that you're not occupying any space. There we go. Is it a nice one? <laughs> Where, where, where was I? Ah, yes. I do know that you use those words because in Serbian you have to use those words. Because for some reason it's not obvious it's not obvious to anybody else in Serbia if you don't include the word measured. Why it shouldn't be obvious I don't understand. But uh, anyway, in English we don't do it. Uh, the studied varieties, the values for height, e, blah, 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 taco So, lots of examples there for you to have a look at. Now, I've got one or two examples from a manuscript. Uh, okay, now these are manuscripts that I have looked at from scientists in Serbia. So these are genuine examples that I have been reading over the years. So we have diversity in the evaluated or the studied or the tested traits amongst the whatever it was, varieties. That becomes diversity in traits amongst the... A comparison of 95% confidence interval values of evaluated traits showed and that became a comparison of 95% confidence intervals and so on. The, the collected data, well yes I suppose you did collect the data. Um, they were statistically analyzed. Well as opposed to, um, how else do you analyze data? May, but we did it by, by hand. <laughs> yes, we did it with a slide rule. Do you know? <laughs> do you know that uh, when I was young, I actually bought log tables. 
Does anybody know what a log table is? Yeah, you're not that old. <laughs> yeah, you know, so when I was at school, I had this, this rather dog-eared book of, uh, of log tables for... I can still remember the logs of 2 and 3. 1.732, uh, no, 1.4... 11732 and 2. Oh no, I can't remember it. Um, 762. Oh. <laughs> cool, it just tells me how old. Yes. I need my calculator to work out what the logs are. <laughs> and I also had a slide rule. At university, I used the slide rule. You know. Has anybody seen a slide rule? No, no. You see, yeah, you're not old enough. It was something with the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, but, uh, well, you know, well, I mean, statistics is sort of pr fairly easy to do nowadays. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, okay, Dosta, Dosta. I know. <laughs> right. Uh, the above mentioned. Okay, two, two words that are never needed. And uh, a lot of the English people are guilty of this as well. So I, I go around cut, cutting it out, go around cutting it out. At the bottom it says, tabulated all the above mentioned traits in order to present. The words in order, nikad, nisu uh, potrema. They are never necessary. But having said that, the majority of English people British people, English-speaking people, use those. But in reality, you can always cut the two words out and it has no effect at all on the meaning of the sentence. So, you don't need to use the words in order. So, uh, uh, there, are, there are ways of rewriting sentences to, to cut out words and I've got an example there in the middle of this slide. If you look at the one that says, should be advantageous for the avoidance of, that becomes, should be advantageous to avoid. So that makes it shorter, it makes it simpler to read. And there are, there are many other examples of that sort. So these came from a Slavic speaker. It's actually somebody from Poland. <laughs> uh, I just put two examples in here. So here's the original text. For all data of measurement, standard error of mean was calculated. Now, I'm sure you can all see yourselves wanting to write those words because they look familiar. That sort of sentence construction. But it's not English. I have rewritten it as follows. Standard errors of means were calculated for all parameters. You start by stating what was done. You start with what was done and then blah, blah, blah. So that's one way of rewriting the sentence. And I've got another example at the bottom here. The results of measurements of gas exchange parameters and chlorophyll content in controlled plants are presented in figure one. So, there's nothing particularly wrong with that. But I've, you see, I've managed to cut one entire line out by simplifying it to say, gas exchange parameters and chlorophyll content in control plants are presented in figure one. Mnogo jednostavnie. It's a lot simpler, you see. So, if I can do it, and if you now know what needs to be done, then yeah, it's over to you. You can now go away and do it. You can make your English easier and simpler to read. Which, which tense of the verb do you use? Unfortunately, the English language has a lot of tenses of verbs has the conditional, the uh, past, past, past continuous, blah, 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 blah. I know that you've got the hourist tense and you've got other strange ones, which I haven't learnt. Um, 
but in general there's a lot more flexibility with the, the verb constructions that you can use in English than you would use in Serbian. Um, doesn't help you because I can't always tell you a clear result, a clear way of doing it. Um, however, I've got an example of when you use the present tense and when you use the past tense. And generally speaking, if you are describing what you did, that's the past tense, what you did in your experiments, and its findings, then you use the simple past tense. And you can also use the active form. You know we've got active and passive. I did something compared with something was done by somebody. Now, scientists traditionally, they never admit to doing anything themselves. It was always done by somebody else, you see. So, the measurements were taken, rather than we went out to the field and we measured plant height and so on. But it's becoming much more accepted nowadays that you can use the active form of the, of the verb. So, I have no problem about writing in my manuscripts we interpret this to mean the following. You see, so it makes it clear to the reader that the, these are our thoughts. They're my thoughts. They're my colleagues' thoughts. They're not just sort of some mystical, somebody told us this was the answer. Could be passive by me, done by us. <laughs> Would that be wrong, using the passive, and just like done by our department? Well, why don't you say our department did these measurements? Well, we were thought that it was more formal. Right? Uh, in Serbian, uh, in English as well, I mean, in English. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a This is part of the problem. If you, if you go back to the very early days of doing science, and I, I was shown an example. I hadn't come across it until a year or so back. This was somebody uh, giving a, an example of Isaac Newton describing what he found when he was using a prism to create a rainbow. And he didn't use the, the, the passive. He said that I put this in front of a light source and I found a, a myriad of wonderful colors. So he was very expressive. And he was using the active form of the verb. And it's only through the years that you know, science is a form or structured language. And it's different from what normal people speak. To bring it down to the level that everybody can understand, it's now becoming much more accepted that you can use the active form of the language in your scientific writing. So... I would have no problem, certainly if I was a journal editor, I would have no problem in saying, we uh, prepared a solution of so-and-so. Now, I know traditionally, well, and it's still normally used, if you're describing the materials and methods, you normally do use the passive. But certainly, I, I've used the active form in the introduction, I've used it in the uh, occasionally in the results, and certainly I use it in the discussion, particularly when talking about the interpretation. We interpret it to mean the following. So I think there's now more flexibility about using the passive, uh, the active tense than there used to be. But would you say I because I didn't <coughs> I'm going to give you a precise answer. If I am the only one who did the entire work, then I did it. But it's a long time since I did any research by myself. 
and because I'm always collaborating with other groups or I've got PhD students or I've got visiting workers then it's never only me who either does the experiment or writes it up or prepares solutions etc. Therefore if it was done only by me I would say I but because it's never done by me I use we. Okay? Does that answer your question? Right. Okay. Um, so move, moving on to the, uh, to the example here. Oh, it's gone. You don't want to see... Um, <laughs> oh, there was a... Yes. Shh. Yes. Okay, um, when I'm referring to the use of the active tense of the verb, I'm referring to what I'm seeing in the journals that I would regularly read, and that's in the biological sciences, in the life sciences. Now, it may be, I do occasionally, not very often, look at papers in the social sciences, and it may be that you're, that you're correct, that in the social sciences, maybe they are still more conservative in the way that they in the way that they write their manuscripts so it could be that the the subject area will have its own preferences However, uh, first, I would recommend that you read the guidelines for the journal. For example, the, the journal Botanica Serbica, for which I'm a copy editor. The guidelines for authors of that journal specifically say use the past tense um, for the materials and methods and the results because that is in the past you've done your research it's gone you know, behind you the present may be used in the introduction and the discussion where appropriate and I've got an example that I'll work through here with you now to show that in some cases we use the past tense and in other cases we can use the present tense for the same manuscript, for the same work. So here we have the example, we sent a spaceship to the moon to examine its composition and we found that it was made of sugar. It was, well, or whatever it is made of. So there's materials and methods and results in the past. However, if the results of your research are likely to be generally true, then you can use the present tense. As the moon is made of sugar, it is very likely to be able to support simple forms of life. So, this is where in the interpretation of your results that you collected last month, last year, or sometime in the past, if your results are likely to represent a situation that will be true today and tomorrow and in the future, then you can refer to them in the present tense. So that's the way that I'm trying to distinguish between the present tense and the past tense. Here's some advice on the use of the articles A and V which I know are particularly challenging for Slavic speakers. Uh, and I have to admit, well I don't have to, but I'm going to, I'm going to admit that there are occasions when I don't know what to use either. 
So, although there are some general rules, there are also occasions that sort of come in between the rules, and I really don't know which one is best. So, let's start with the word tomato. Tomato used as a descriptor, if you like, it uh, it's, could be used as an, as an adjective. Tomato juice is usually sweet, so we don't have any article there. Now, if I was doing an experiment, well, let's use grapes, because we're in a vinograd. So, let's have a grape. I'm doing an experiment, some research on grapes, so I go into your vineyard and I collect a grape. I've got a whole field of grapes in front of me, and I can choose any grape I like. So I'm going to choose uh, a grape from this plant here. It's not a specific grape, it's just any one amongst the thousands of grapes that are in the field. So there's nothing special about it before I choose it. So it's just a grape. You, know, you can go to a shop and you can buy a grape. It'd be a bit silly to buy just one grape, but you could do it. However, once I've got the grape in my hand, it's the grape. It's the grape in my hand. See? Or, if I wanted to sample a whole series of grapes during the season as they're developing in the field, I could go out to the plants and I could put a label on individual grapes. So I could have, let's say, 20 grapes were labeled. Now, that means that they are no longer just, just a grape. They are the grapes that I'm going to be working on. So they, so they have become special. They've become particular. They're no longer just one of millions. So that's when A becomes the, when it's specific. When you can see that, ah, I'm going to do something with this, so it's the wheat it's the grape, it's the tomato that I'm going to analyze. If I used A, then it means that I haven't yet harvested it. It's still on the plant because I haven't, cho I haven't chosen it yet. So if it's A, if it's A, it means that it's not yet, ident not yet identified. Uh, blah, 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 the tomato, that's for the tomatoes. Yes, you can do that with... You don't you need to use A or V when you're talking... frequently when you're talking about a noun in the plural form. Again, I would... See, th those are examples where you can use tomato in the plural form without any article. So you don't need a, you don't need the. But in the second one of those two, I've got tomatoes are regarded as sweet. That's all tomatoes in the whole world. They're normally regarded as sweet. So I wouldn't say the tomatoes are regarded as sweet because it would be a bit silly because, you know, all tomatoes are sweet. But, I could say, the tomatoes were harvested. Because these are specific tomatoes, I have identified them, they are on my plants in my experiment. So I could also use the word the. But it's not essential. It would depend on the whole sentence construction. And unfortunately, without going through all sorts of examples of sentences, it would be difficult for me to be, uh, to be clear for you when I use the and when I don't use it. But there are some general rules there. Um, here at the bottom, I've put the in front of tomatoes because they are specific tomatoes. 
they're of the variety Sonata. Or you could say these are specific grapes, this is Riesling or whatever it is. 